Hi everyone, welcome to uh, RPM with Nyameka. So today we have another special guest. We are actually doing it via Zoom. And uh, I'd like for you to introduce yourself, please. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Robin Lee Samuel. I am very happy to be here. Great. So, so Robin Lee, just tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, uh, where did you grow up and, and, and like... How did you get to be where you are right now? Uh, well, I grew up in the Eastern Cape in a small town called King Williamstown. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's kind of where I found my roots, my foundation. Um, and then I think about 10, 10 ish years ago, my family moved to Cape Town. And now I am a content writer, I'm a freelancer. Um, I work with companies and with authors to create content that helps them kind of get their business out there, get their messages out there. And that's what I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about writing and helping people get their message across to their audiences in a way that um, inspires and connects with them. That, that is amazing. Uh, it's probably one of the most rare professions we've seen in South Africa so far. Uh, before we get to that, actually, um, your profession, I just want to know, you said something about the fact that in the Eastern Cape, in, in a uh, town called Grahamstown, you found your roots. So explain to me, what do you mean when you say you found your roots? Just correction, it's King Williamstown, I think. King um, Williamstown, sorry. Uh -huh. The place formerly known as King Williamstown. Uh, well... I grew up in a Christian home. I went to Sunday school. I went to youth. And I think um, I specifically grew up in a Methodist church. And even though since then I've had, um, I've had experience in different types of like Christian traditions mm -hmm. um, from Pentecostal to charismatic to um, kind of those holiness type churches. Yeah. My roots are still Methodist, like the teachings that I learned in Sunday school about, you know, like discipline is something that my Sunday school teacher kind of spoke about a lot, like every single week. And mm -hmm. whenever I look back at, at like my life, it's those teachings, the things about like, you know, theft doesn't start with everything going on in our country right now. Mm -hmm. Theft doesn't start with a riot. It starts with sugar like a yeah, teaspoon of yeah. sugar or like a tiny chocolate bar. Um, it starts with those decisions you make when you're young and the things you say yes to when you're young. Yeah. And that's what I mean by like, that's where I was kind of formed. The things that I learned to say yes to, the things that I learned to say no to, um, I kind of made those decisions in King Williamstown and, and based on the people that I was surrounded with back then. Oh, that's great. Um, I want to get back to the, you know, theft doesn't start, you know, with the big thing, starts with a small thing. And actually starts also with the need, eh? If the need is not met, then, uh, you know, people look for other ways of satisfying the need, would you say? Uh, yeah, definitely. Like, it goes back to, like, that's why people steal, because you have someone who, like, let's say you have two people, and they don't have access to something. Mm. One person in the exact same situation, like same state, like two brothers um, grew up in the same space. They don't have access to something. They ask for it. And, mm. and the answer is no. So one goes, OK, that was no. I can figure out how to get it by my, on my own, or I can be satisfied with not having it. Whereas the other one was like, OK, you're saying no. I'll just take it. Yeah, you it's yeah. right there. I'll just mm. take it. Um, so it is like those choice things. I'm answering your question. Mm. No, no, it, I was just following up. Actually, I, I realized I got very serious with uh, without starting very light. So um, let's start very light. We're gonna get back to these things uh, as time goes on. But tell me, what's on your playlist? On my playlist, well, this podcast called the Holy Post Podcast, that's something I've been listening to a lot. Uh -huh. What and is it about? Other, it's um, the guy from the Vegetales creator. 
who created fairy tales uh -huh. him and a couple of other theologians and christians they get to got together and they have um thoughtful discussions about mostly evangelicalism mm -hmm. or the evangelical movement yeah and christianity in kind of the marketplace or in the square in the public square yes that's how what they talk about so they look at things like social justice voting um things like that and how we should look at them, not necessarily as our name, like that for us, it would be South Africans, not just as South Africans, but as, as Christians. And also like just debunking some of the things that we've, that are tradition, like kind of separating what is actually Bible and what mm -hmm. is church tradition mm -hmm. and what is like, for them, it would be American church tradition. For us, it would be South African church tradition. And it's helped me think differently about like politics and voting and some of the mm. social justice issues that um, we are faced with. And it's easy to just say, well, the Bible says, but you know, the Bible says things on both sides or both sides rather use the Bible to justify their, their thing, whatever that may be. So it's like, well, if they're saying the Bible's telling us that this is the way to go, and they're saying the Bible's telling us that's the way to go, what's the Bible actually saying? Um, and that's what I love about the podcast. And they also like kind of ask for like thought provoking questions about like, okay, that's the thing, but like as an individual, how do I respond to this thing? How do I make a change in this in my everyday life so that I can, you know, be more Christ like and stuff? Mm. So there's that. And then there's also some music on my playlist. I'm working on a fiction um, project uh, as like a ghostwriting project. And for that, I use music as inspiration. So there's a lot of Ed Sheeran and a lot of um, like angsty love songs <laughs> that are on there right now, just to create the mood so I can write better. Oh, wow. That's, uh, that's a mouthful. I'm actually realizing that. I don't feel sorry that we started on a serious note because then, like, you're very serious. Like, you listen to stuff, but it's also very serious stuff. So it's okay. I don't apologize for my studying very seriously. But is this person Sky Jatani? Uh, Sky Jatani is one of the, the creators. So the Holy Post podcast combines Sky Jatani's company and uh. Full Vicious company. So he created, uh. like, uh, Veggie Tales for people who grew up on that. Um, and uh, what's, in a, what's in the Bible, it's a Christian series for kids mm. that takes them through the Bible um, with like puppets and stuff like that. Uh, okay, yeah, because you've, you've sent me that stuff and I've actually enjoyed listening to it. It's been really, really great. So thank you for sending me um, those, those podcasts. I, I was able to listen to them. Actually, I realized I was going to, you sent me, uh, I think about five or six, and I realized for me to actually get the essence of it, I need to not just listen to all, all of them at once, you know, break them down. So I listened to the last one, actually, actually three, uh, the three, I felt like they were sort of in tandem about the prodigal son, and I thought they were in tandem, so I listened to them today. So thank you for that. Yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed listening to that. So now um, uh, you're going to tell me what you do and you're going to tell me about the content writing, right? Uh, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, I am a freelancer. I do mm -hmm. content writing as well as ghost writing. Mm -hmm. um, so I write a bunch of stuff for companies and, and authors because, you know, being an author doesn't necessarily mean that you wrote the book. Um, yeah. It just means, oh. it means on the title. Um, so sometimes authors outsource their, their writing and ghostwriters do that. So that's one of the things that I do. I also review books um, for a company called the Independent Book Review. And mm -hmm. that's kind of spreading. It goes back to helping authors and companies and businesses do the thing that, that they're called to do. Because I believe that everyone has, has everyone has this thing inside them, this passion inside them mm -hmm. that help will help make the world hopefully a better place. And I feel like my role is to help them get that message out there. Wow. Um, I, I, if I think about it, yours, um, what you're doing is very much a rare career or a rare job path. I just tell people out there, how do you get into this 
into this um, path? Like, how does one, if one is interested, like, I don't know how to do it. Because obviously, I don't think there's a, lot, there's a lot of it out there. Or maybe there is, but it's just not as open to others as, as it, it was to you. So just explain to us, how do you get there? Um, content writing or just writing in general. Um, content writing, um, how do you get the job of being a content? Because, I mean, it, it is a unique um, you would agree with me it is a unique job um, and not everybody knows about it mm -hmm. or has heard about it and there are people who might be interested in doing it but actually they they, they don't know how they go about pursuing it so oh, content writing is anything that companies use to kind of promote their, their materials without mm -hmm. or their products without actually selling like it's not mm -hmm. an ad so if you think about your refrigerator when you buy a fridge you get a user manual with it that's content. Mm -hmm. um, or if you look at like a company's youtube page their facebook page their instagram all of that their blog all of that is is content and companies are currently because of everything that happened last year companies are becoming a lot more digital and they're actually hiring in-house content writers to create things like their social media posts their blog posts to write emails if you get like for listeners if you get an email from any company a content writer probably wrote the stuff that's in there so wow. you can go on places like linkedin on business business community um and indeed they have a lot of there's a lot of openings right now for um content writers and for people who want to study like what do you study to become a content writer um there are a couple of schools that have actual courses in um in digital marketing in digital marketing mm, courses mm. yeah Mm, that's uh that's uh yeah it, it is a it is a unique uh, job and, and like you said then there's a, there's a need because obviously we've gone digital so thank you for for sharing that information with us we, we definitely going to come back to that uh, later on but I, I need to find out from you especially with what is going on in south africa without getting into much detail about what's going on but i guess south africa it is facing um either one of its worst times or the worst times um in in our history um, so would you say that um, race, the gospel, do you say, would you say that there's a mix in there? And if there is, how do you see the mix? I was thinking about this a lot. And, you know, mm -hmm. people use, we don't really see the gospel being used anymore as much to justify um, like racial violence in South Africa. We don't see that that much anymore. But around the world, people do use the gospel to kind of justify either um, yeah. their political, like their political viewpoints and stuff like that. Yeah. And the Bible for a long time has been used to justify um, like racism and to justify just like lots of injustice, like slavery yeah. and stuff like that yeah. around the world. Um, it's also been used to kind of justify on the other side, like people who worked to end slavery mm. they did it because of biblical reasons if you think about like the um like in south africa like nelson mandela desmond tutu declared when they got together they could have decided or the ANC could have decided you know what we're going to take over this country we're going to do it by force but mm. they didn't because individual people um decided to move forward to forgive the past and to reconcile um, so that we could build a better country, so that we could build a better country together. Mm. And I think a lot of that has been kind of, I think we're forgetting about that a lot in South Africa right now. Um, we're forgetting the parts about, we're forgetting the mercy, we're forgetting the forgiveness, we're forgetting um, a lot of that. And there's a lot of there's a lot of anger still mm. in, in people yeah. and it comes out in different ways. And um, so I think that the gospel isn't really there, which is probably a problem, I think. Not because people are, like, it's not there in that, like, no one's currently saying, hey, we're gonna go riot and loot the streets because of the Bible says so. No one's doing that, thankfully. But um, in terms of just like you don't hear the church's voice as 
if we wouldn't like it to be heard. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's almost like, like instead of, well, people would ask like, where's God when all this is happening? It's like, where's the church when all of this is happening? Um, yeah. So yeah, that's kind of how I see that playing out. Like, yeah. Where is the church when all of this is happening? How can actually the church get involved in a practical sense, do you think? That's a good question. That's a good one to, um, to I actually don't know. Uh, but that is, <laughs> that is a good question. Um, I think just like individuals, like how does anyone get involved? It's, it's individuals who make decisions that are focused on loving your neighbor and loving and loving others. And instead of um, like my old, my former dance teacher was saying the other day when someone was like trying to rally up people to pray about the situation and sending forward like voice notes and stuff. She was like, well, you know, you can pray about this without forwarding that thing that's gonna cause panic in everyone. So that's one Mm, way mm, that like mm. the church can do something is by not perpetuating the panic and the spread of anxiety and stuff, but instead saying, well, um, let's be agents of peace. Let's be agents of, um, of love. And let's show, let's actually, instead of spreading negativity, spread peace and hope and love. And when Mm. you're encountering someone like in your, like, for pastors or for just Christians encountering other other people who are feeling anxious to be Mm. to actually know that you can choose how you respond in that in that moment you don't have to take on the panic and the fear and the anxiety you don't have to do that yeah um but you can be a safe space for those people in those in in that moment and then also like like encourage them Mm. because like Mm. no one knows how this is going to end no one knows how long this is going to last but yeah yeah um yeah being being an agent of of peace and love and hope instead of spreading fear and panic and just Mm. more of that more chaos Mm. yeah yeah it's it's uh, i think for me the the most interesting thing which i find unbelievable is the fact that uh, there's always this conspiracy theorist and they thrive on on on, on in, invoking fear they thrive on invoking false messaging um even when the um the pandemic started in south africa there were this there were these uh, inf- misinformation that happened obviously until the government set up like hey listen this is the only form of information that you can get that is trustworthy so um, I want to basically got into that because uh, obviously there's been a, a message about pray for South Africa and everybody's like pray for South Africa. And actually um, it's a beautiful trend because we know that, you know, Jesus is the answer for the world today and Jesus is the answer for South Africa, especially in this time. And so um, I saw uh, one of the um, threads going on instead of prayer and thoughts, how about change the structure? How about change this? I want to, I want you to basically then answer that question of the people who are saying that, that prayer doesn't answer things. Um, how about change uh, the infrastructure? How about change policies and stuff like that? What do you say to people that say that? Who says prayer doesn't answer things? Like, I don't, I think like when we think about praying, um, it's almost, it's being used so much that it almost becomes like, a, oh, it's like, a, it's just a nice thing that people say. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like as Christians, we believe that God hears our prayers and that, um, that he's faithful, but that answer is going to come in different ways. That answer mm. might come through like changes, and mm. for anything in government to change, it takes it takes a long time, and also mm. it takes there's chaos because whatever mm. government changes, mm. um, the same people who are saying prayer is not going to answer anything, let's do these changes. They might like when those changes happen, they might find something else to complain about. So like the prayer the answer to that prayer one it might not come today or tomorrow yeah it might not come um the way we expect it to come and so but that doesn't necessarily mean that like prayer doesn't work like Mm -hmm. as believers we know that it works we know that god answers prayers we know that he is faithful 
Um, mm -hmm. And we've seen it in our country, we've seen it in our own lives. Uh, but I also think that you shouldn't necessarily force someone who doesn't believe in prayer, who doesn't mm -hmm. believe mm -hmm. that God exists. Yeah. You shouldn't force them to, do, to say, well, okay, cool. But um, not like not that you're saying, okay, cool. Like you can believe whatever you believe. But in that moment, it's like, it's, they're not necessarily saying, um, don't just pray, but yeah. it's more of like, you know what, something needs to happen. Something needs to happen. And that's, and it's looking at the heart behind the words so that you're not just reacting to yeah. this person who's saying, your prayer is not going to, like, what's the point of praying? It's not going to work anyway. Mm. It's what's the heart behind that. The heart behind that might be, you know, like, one, God doesn't exist, or two, like, we need to see something actually happening, not just the church on their knees praying. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, we need both. Uh, I, I, we, yes, we, we, we need, need prayer and Definitely. action. I mean, yeah, the, you know, it goes to James, uh, the book of James says, a faith without action is dead. So we definitely need both. In this, in this, in this place, people need to realize that they work in tandem. Actually, they work um, together. And now, as yeah, a content, yeah, yeah, as a content strategist, as a writer, and, and just somebody who has a unique um, job in the South African context, how can you use your passions uh, for the rebuilding of uh, South Africa? Um, one would be, like I mentioned earlier, through helping other businesses um, mm -hmm. as a, in a capitalist world, like when businesses thrive, company thrives, the economy thrives. Mm -hmm. So helping other businesses um, with their messaging, with their, with their, yeah, with their messaging um, and with mm -hmm. their content strategy, helping that get out there um, is one way that I think I've helped. And also um, on my Instagram and on my Facebook spaces, um, just talking about how, talking about how to respond like in, in times like this, Mm. Um, I try not to comment too much on things that happen on or like outside of kind of the writing space. But um, when I do, it's always like, okay, so how can I help the people who see this post respond better as a business person? Yeah. And then something else that I'm doing, um, I'm starting my own podcast where I'd like to create space for people who have experience in like people who've been running successful businesses for like mm, 50, mm. 20, 30 years, but like they don't have a book out there. They don't have a, like a public voice, but they have experience. They've done this and yeah. giving them a space to, to kind of teach what they know so that the next generation comes up, coming up, um, can glean from that and can learn from that so that they want to avoid the mistakes that, you know, other people have, um have been through and mm -hmm. that they kind of are inspired to look at different things to maybe start different economies because that's how we boost our economy it's through not just reinventing the wheel but it's through innovation and through yeah. starting out different like sectors and stuff like that wow that, that's amazing that is so great um, yeah, yeah, just 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 breaking the mold, thinking outside the box, making sure that people realize that there's another um, way in which um, our economies can be built, especially the South African economy at this point. So the president right now has one probably the toughest job in South Africa at this point because everything lies on his shoulders. And I want to know if you're yeah. in his position for, I don't know, for a day or a week, whatever, how, how would you handle just not, not just this situation, but just generally how as South Africa, how you can, you know, build, how you can, you, how, how do you lead? How do you show courage? How do you show love? How do you show unity? I mean, all of these things lie on his shoulders. So you had that hat for one week, what would you do? Uh, there would be nothing I could do in a week that would make any significant change. But uh, I think our current president has been, um, he's been so exemplary in how he handles the And like one of my favorite presidents, Calvin Bates, 
Um, so just the way that he also like when when it was crunch time, where mm-hmm. we had to like um, represent or reimagine or reintroduce South Africa to like the global markets, he took that on himself and did it himself. Um, so those are kind of two two people that you know if I was president, I would try to emulate um, doing the things taking like whatever the biggest task is in the nation right now and taking that upon yourself and not just like they say don't leave the the, the marketing to the marketing department um and doing it yourself so it's kind of something like that yeah. and then just as Ramapo, uh, ramaphosa president ramaphosa has been um collected calm confident he's shown that you know he's he's there you see him Mm-hmm. Uh, so that would be things that I would try to emulate if I mm-hmm. were well, Yeah, be there. Thank you so much for that. I think we definitely forget the fact that leaders sometimes the best you can do is just be there so that actually people can see that you're there and you, you, you're there to support. Um, yeah, well, with him at this point, it's a, it's a very interesting thing because it doesn't just have to be that he has to act. But uh, I'm so grateful for that. If you just have like parting words, any words you'd like to say to anybody listening, anybody watching, uh, you just want to encourage them on pearls of wisdom, what would you say? I think one of the biggest things that I've learned um, on my journey is to try new things and not to be afraid of failure. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, failure happens. We see failure as like, the end of things but it's not it's just a result mm. of whatever you were do, doing so failure means it didn't work mm. and mm. then you just try something else try a new approach to like if it's work trying a new approach to the thing that you're doing um or if it's deciding you know actually this is not for me um and then trying something completely new and something completely different I think when you get past the fear of no, the fear of failing, the fear of of all of that, then it gets easier to take risks to actually go after the things that um that are beyond just what society says is 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 within your potential. Yeah. Um, you get to jump outside the box. You get to stay in the box if that's what you want. Um, but trying, figuring out what it is that will help you reach your goal in life, mm-hmm. um, whatever that looks like. And it doesn't have to look like, you know, candy in the clouds. It can look like just having um, children who are educated and working and they've got, like, that is as amazing as, you know, candy in the clouds. And um, I think a lot of times we, yeah, don't don't underestimate the work that you do and don't be afraid to try new things. Mm, wow. Don't underestimate the work that you do and don't, don't be too scared to try new things. Indeed, those are the words for the day for me. Um, Robin Lee, thank you so much for being on RPM with Nyameka and uh, you know, wish you the best. Thank you so much for having me.